How you doing guys and welcome back to another one. Today we're going to be strictly looking at ability cards and the dead eye cards. We're also going to be looking at the ammunition and the weapons and how that also plays a part in each layout alongside with the tonics. Now if any of you guys are veteran players you probably already have your favourite layouts to hand however if any of you dudes are struggling with ability cards or putting anything together this is the place to be. Now I can tell you these ability cards are mainly for PvP, however if you dudes want a lineup for PvE then I'm just going to put this out there from the get go. First things first is going to be paint it black, it's the easiest thing to use in regards to NPCs. The second thing is eye for an eye, this is mostly effective when you hit the headshots and what this is going to do, it saves you wasting all your tonics on dead eye. Thirdly is going to be Strange Medicine. Every single time you strike your opponent, you will gain health. Therefore, you won't have to keep taking health cures. Last on the list is gonna be Never Without One, as it does offer protection, pretty much the same as Iron Lung does. However, you can take a headshot. When you're playing against the NPCs, normally you can just pick your hat back up again and put it back on your head. However, if your hat does fall off, then remember you're gonna sustain more damage. And remember dudes, this is the most cost effective layout for when you're doing PvE and therefore you don't have to spend a whole bunch of money on tonics. If you're the type of individual that likes sniping for example, then NPCs don't really take a lot of damage in the first place, so you can just snipe with this build anyway. Now if you're the type of person that likes to snipe at mid-range, you can also just change PIB over to Slippery but you had better make sure that you nail those headshots. Now, if you're someone that likes to stand further back when you're sniping, you can always use focus fire as it will inflict a lot more damage if you're going for body shots and it works very well with eye for an eye. Also quite an inspiration which regenerates more health while you're in dead eye could come in pretty handy if you are taking any damage. Now dudes, after viewing other YouTubers content surrounding ability cards, what we know for certain is if somebody says this is the best ability layout, with all due respect to them, they don't know what they're talking about. The problem is, is yes, dead eye cards can counter dead eye cards, but when you bring weapons and ammunition and different tonics into the situation, it's a major game changer. And the only thing you can try to do is change your layout to accommodate you to being able to fight anybody using any layout. So we're going to be showing the main cards that are going to be able to counter any style with any weapons and any ammunition. So first of all, let's take a look at the aggressive cards. Now it's important to remember that when selecting aggressive cards, that it's going to be so crucial to find cards that are balanced and don't have too many conditions to them. An ability card is only effective if you can use it there and then to get the job done. If you have to waste your time, for example, with Landon's patience to wait up to 15 seconds before the shot, it's defeating the purpose. So my dealings with aggressive cards and the way I'm gonna try to narrow this down, in my opinion, is gonna be to look at what's most balanced. Now, since every single card has some kind of stipulation surrounding it, it's important to take that into consideration. So if we start with peak condition, for example, for it to do its job correctly, you just need to make sure that your stamina bar is more or less above 75%. However, every time you shoot an opponent, it inflicts the same amount of damage every single time. So for somebody like myself, it's a card that can be used relatively easy and it doesn't have too many stipulations surrounding it. Now, just for fun, we're gonna start on the other side. Let's look at Landon's Patience. My personal issue with Landon's Patience is you have to wait up to 15 seconds before it can increase the maximum damage. Now the damage that it's increased by is actually quite a lot. So for example, if you're fighting a player that doesn't have too much um, defensive cards or tonics in place, then you're pretty much going to take them out with one body shot. However, if you're fighting an experienced player, the same thing is not going to be happening, especially if they're reading your cards. Now, this is an absolute lethal card if you know exactly where and when to use it, but it's not like I would just take it into a shootout series. 
So for me, this card wouldn't be used in a balanced situation. It would come down to an individual circumstance. Now, next we're gonna be looking at winning streak. And the reason why I value this card higher than something like Landon's Patience is if you're accurate with your shots and you don't miss shots often, then this is gonna be fully in effect. For example, if you were having a snipe fight, the only thing you need to do is hit them repeatedly to get the benefits of the card. The same thing goes for all the other weapons within the game, that making this card a lot more balanced because you can use it with any weapons. Now the next card we're looking at is Gunslinger's Choice and the cost and benefits of this card are pretty simple. If you're not wielding two weapons at one time, this card is not in effect at all. Unlike Winning Streak, you can use it with any weapon but Gunslinger's Choice is limited. Now for Gunslinger's Choice, you will be more accurate and deal more damage but as I said before, it will not work with every single weapon and only in certain circumstances, therefore not creating as much balance as winning streak. Now finally we're going to be looking at sharpshooter and the positives and negatives. Now for example you can only use this card if you're in scope mode. Is that such a bad thing? No not really because if you're someone that only snipes for example then you're going to go put your back against something and snipe people and nine times out of ten you're going to be in scope mode. Now the thing that's absolutely amazing about this card is it will protect you and it will deal more damage and in that department no other card comes close now this is another card that should only be selected for certain circumstances but i do hold this card at a higher value than the other two so therefore if i had to pick two cards to go with my lineup it would be peak condition then it would be winning streak and the option of sniping would always be sharpshooter the other two cards would very much come down to certain circumstances and are best used as part of a game plan now dudes we're very quickly going to be looking at these two defensive cards in particular and there's a reason for us doing so now we carried out this experiment using a carcano rifle and we used tier one two and three health cures now when both cards were using tier one tonics the results were pretty clear that both parties took three shots each now when we started using tier two tonics you would have thought that fool me once would start to prevail however it still only took four shots the same as iron lung and you guessed it dudes even when we took a tier three tonic both fool me once and iron lung both performed the same now we started to think that maybe we're using too much leverage when it comes to the weapons so we used the Mauser pistols and conducted the exact same experiment and both Fool Me Once and Iron Lung took 14 shots each. Now since Fool Me Once is supposed to reduce damage the more you're shot and this clearly wasn't happening we decided to test out the other defensive cards also to see how many shots they can take and guess what every single defensive card more or less takes the exact same amount of punishment if you're not stacking them together now when looking for the best possible ability layouts to put together it's important to know that every defensive card will actually offer a very similar level of protection now guys, as I said before, we're not going to be pulling the wall over people's eyes when it comes to what offers the most protection on the game. And unfortunately, this really does come down to the tier 3 tonic that Rockstar have decided to put in the game. The reason is, is if you take off all your ability cards and just take the tier 3 tonic, you can still take 4 shots to the body with the Carcano rifle. And if you include Minty Game, you can take five shots now the only actual defensive ability cards that will match this is if you stick nwo iron lung and sharpshooter all together then you can still take four consecutive shots without taking any tonics now some of you dudes will be asking what's the point in defensive ability cards when tier 3 tonics is so overpowered that's exactly my question now what would be the point in stacking all of these together when you can merely just take a tier 3 tonic, come in and out of a showdown series for example, craft more tonics, go straight back in. 
Now, if players can already take two body shots with a Carcano rifle, then what do these defensive cards actually offer? Now, with the exception of Fool Me Once, all the other defensive cards that I have named here, they can all offer one extra body shot. So if you use them by themselves, you can take one extra body shot without taking any tonics. However, when looking at a card like Fool Me Once, there is a flip side to this card. If you combine it with Sharpshooter, for example, and then take a tier three tonic, you can then take eight clear body shots when if you try to match any of the other defensive cards together as a pair none of them can take eight shots they can all take seven now in my opinion it would be pointless to continue to conduct these experiments without using the tier three tonic merely because it plays a huge part in the game when one single tonic can create just as much protection as three ability cards put together this is definitely a red flag now i'm also going to throw one more spanner into the works when it comes to a tier three health cure now shout out to demon eight inside for bringing this up and it's absolutely correct now everyone is familiar with if you stand at this distance using pib then the headshots simply don't register now the problem here is they don't register as headshots and they don't register as body shots but the question being are there any exploits here for example when you're taking a tier 3 tonic you can take five headshots at this distance but that's not it if you combine the tier 3 health cure with minty game for example those five headshots very quickly turn in to seven headshots are people using this in showdown series today 100 million percent all you would have to do is keep each opponent roughly at this distance and you can take a lot more headshots than what they can now do i use tier 3 tonics in a showdown series no because my name is not bambi however if i come across someone that is using tier 3 tonics the best way to deal with them is a carcano directly in the mouth but when we're talking about defensive cards and tier 3 tonics this is a massive game changer the tier 3 tonic actually is a lot more powerful than any of the defensive cards now dudes, I'm just going to give you a few honourable mentions to some of the other Deadeye cards that in my opinion are not realistic when it comes to PvP. First of all, a moment to recuperate. Now this card is based around regenerating health while your Deadeye is active. The problem you've got is why wouldn't you just take a tier 1, 2 or 3 tonic because your Deadeye card could be used for evading bullets, giving out more punishment taking more headshots or painting your targets unless you want to use this for free aim on npcs it's absolutely useless now again with quite an inspiration you're finding yourself in a similar situation while you're activating deadeye to regenerate health somebody's just going to come along with focus fire and take you out now the same can be said for cold blooded you have to actually get a kill just to get a regeneration in health and again it's the same story what if you don't shoot anybody you're going to be absolute worm food and you're wasting your dead eye card now last but not least necessity breeds this basically entails that the less health that you've got the more damage that you're going to give I have to get my life down really really low just to inflict more damage but in doing so I become a one shot body kill that is absolutely ridiculous nobody in their right sense of mind would do that so if anybody's thinking about using any of these cards outside of PvE you are going to be worm food anyone using focus fire slow and steady slippery or PIB is going to absolutely crush you let's take a look at focus fire and slow and steady now the reason why we're starting off with these two dead eye cards is because one of them offers protection and the other one dishes out damage if both cards were active and there was no other ability cards and both parties were taking tier one tonics then in actual fact both of them can take three shots now within this particular sniping situation the argument is always going to be that with focus fire you've got a lot more freedom to move around as it moves faster but with slow and steady you're stuck walking now the exact same argument can be made if both parties were using pistols because focus fire and slow and steady can both take seven shots 
each. And remember, we're still only using tier one tonics. So when do we reach the part where one of the cards starts outperforming the other? Well, interestingly enough, if you switch over to the Lamat revolvers or both of the navies, then the more damage being inflicted upon slow and steady, the better it starts to perform. So with both Dead Eye cards active and only tier one tonics being consumed, Focus Fire can only take five shots when slow and steady can take six shots. Now, if any of you guys are curious to what would win out of a full defensive build with slow and steady and a full aggressive build using focus fire, we're doing this with tier three tonics and we're conducting this experiment using the Carcano rifle. Now, as you guys can probably see that slow and steady can take six shots and focus fire can only take five shots. There's not a lot in this at all. So we also conducted the experiment using the Navy revolvers for focus fire we supplemented sharpshooter for gunslinger's choice and for slow and steady we supplemented sharpshooter for winning streak now in both occasions slow and steady took one extra shot damage but if you guys are trying to pick between slow and steady and focus fire it's also important to remember that with focus fire you've got all your mobility in movement but with slow and steady you can only walk while dead eye is active however while in slow and steady you can take multiple headshots focus fire can't take one headshot now because there's so many positives and minuses to both of these ability layouts how for example could you be better with slow and steady it's pretty simple if you speed up your first person settings for when you're using the carcano or rolling block rifle then you're able to make up for the lack of mobility in targeting multiple different opponents now with focus fire there's not a lot you can actually achieve in terms of mid to close range combat reasons being if there's more than one person in that session and they're using painted black you're absolutely toast now in regard to focus fire and slow and steady these are mainly used in free roam posse battles because surrounded with other cards the whole thing becomes an absolute nightmare you'll mainly get players that are using focus fire running away at the top of the hill and only using the card to snipe with and they'll continuously just run away from you and some people will try to relate that to skill However, this also works extremely well because in a free roam posse battle, while focus fire is active, everyone else still reaps the benefits. So if you have a slow and steady fighter in the middle of the battlefield and one of your guys is using PIB, for example, then Mauser in the player using slow and steady is going to be pretty simple, especially if you're good at headshots. Now, in terms of damage and damage reduction, both of these dead eye cards by themselves are actually quite well balanced and they do their purpose. Now, when looking at other players' ability cards, it's really important to try to spot a weakness within the ability layout. That's the only way you're gonna know if you are gaining an advantage over your opponent by way of ability cards. As soon as you spot the weakness in their ability layout, you know that you can apply the best possible cards to be able to destroy them. Now, the argument between slow and steady and focus fire is gonna come down to an individual's skill level instead of one particular dead eye card being better. But this doesn't work for all the other dead eye cards. Focus fire versus PIB at mid to close range PIB will absolutely destroy focus fire as would slippery. So if your particular skill set is to be a sniper, then both the focus fire full aggressive build with a tier three tonic is the best possible layout and slow and steady with a full defensive build is also one of the best layouts. You can't really separate the two when it comes to sniping. And in a straight up snipe fight, PIB and slippery have nothing to offer. Now we're going to move towards mid to close range and the battle of the dead eye cards. Now as discussed before focus fire doesn't really have 
a legitimate argument here unless the individual is using E rounds or incendiary rounds and a tier 3 tonic and a lag switch he's not really going to have a lot of success. Normally someone wielding focus fire at mid to close range will probably switch to PIB or slippery. Both participants were veteran players with slow and steady and PIB. It's going to come down to overall skill level. The PIB fighter wouldn't be dumb enough to scope with the slow and steady if they're a veteran player and slow and steady wouldn't be dumb enough to come out of Deadeye while at mid to close range with the PIB fighter. But on balance PIB is a more favoured card because it's more balanced. For example, if you go into a shootout series, you're going to kill way more opponents with PIB than the slow and steady fighter ever could. Now, when we look at things such as fire bottles, fire arrows, bolos, the PIB artist has enough things there to numb the slow and steady fighter and win with ease. Now, because of all of these things existing in the game, PIB will beat slow and steady seven days a week. Because of the restricted movement with slow and steady, there's not much it's gonna be able to do about PIB. Now, because of all the different things that Rockstar have felt the need to put inside of this game, we have to kind of conduct all these experiments taking that into consideration. So therefore mid to close range with PIB and all the accessories that we're allowed to have, PIB would be successful. However, focus fire at mid to close range would not be as successful, strictly being because they can take headshots still. So the lineup so far is that Slippery will beat focus fire mid to close range, Slippery will beat slow and steady mid to close range, PIB will be slow and steady at mid to close range with all the facets within the game and also PIB will be focus fire at mid to close range. Now the only two dead eye cards that then comes down to is slippery versus PIB. What would win at mid to close range? Now with both of these dead eye cards if we're using regular ammo for any weapons then this is how it turns out. So the Slippery Fighter mid to close range is at a disadvantage because the PIB Fighter can just use the bow and there's nothing the Slippery Fighter will be able to do about it. Now controlling the distance around about here will give the Slippery Fighter some serious problems. Even if he tried to use a Carcano at this distance, the bow will be victorious because you can paint the target. Now given the fact that PIB can still paint the Slippery Fighter using the bow and any throwable objects, with regular ammunition the Slippery Fighter doesn't stand a chance and the PIB wins this argument. Now this is where things will start to get interesting with the exception of the dynamite arrows if you was to use E rounds or incendiary rounds who would win PIB or Slippery. Now Slippery in this situation will crush any dead eye card going and the reason being is the slippery fighter can switch off anytime he wants he can keep his opponent at this distance everyone else is going to have a hard time trying to beat them even if the PIB fighter tries to use the bow for example the slippery fighter can switch off and hit you with an E round or an incendiary round a lot faster than you can paint them with the bow therefore slippery with any ammunition will pretty much crush any opponent and this is at mid to close range. Now in regards to the dynamite arrows, PIB would probably get the advantage at long range because you can paint the target still, but at mid to close range, Slippery can still hit you with the same dynamite arrows. And that also works the same in regard to fire arrows. Now if you haven't guessed already, the conclusion to all the dead eye cards has now come to an end. What is the most powerful dead eye card at mid to close range with all the facets within the game? That is Slippery. It's the most dominating card in a one on one situation with anybody at mid to close range. But the question being, would I use these tactics in battle? No, I wouldn't because it's not competitive. I don't believe that there is anything competitive about switching off Slippery and then hitting someone with an Incendiary or an E-Round. It's one of the most easiest things you can do in the game, but also on the other hand, it's the most effective thing you can do in the game with everything 
considered. Now, PIB is a very close second, and if you took the E rounds away from the situation, then PIB would be the winner. Now, in terms of shootout series, PIB is the most popular and probably the most balanced card to use because it's going to give you the best possible score. In terms of killing multiple targets fast, PIB is the way forward. Now guys, if I was trying to annoy another fighter or I was trying to be indestructible and going by the rules of the game, then at long distance I would use the focus fire layout, full aggressive build until I enter mid to close range. I would then change over to this slippery layout. My game plan would be just to switch off slippery, hit my opponent with E rounds and incendiary rounds. I'd still be taking tier three tonics. I can't really say that this is the way that I ever fight because I never do, but this is the most indestructible way you can fight on this game. Taking in consideration the tonics and the ammunition and the Deadeye and ability cards, this will make you undefeatable against any single opponent. Now remember you can still scope using this ability layout and this would counteract a PIB fighter at mid range. The weapons would be one semi-automatic shotgun, pistols or revolvers and the Carcano rifle. Now the thing about this layout guys is you only need to touch them with one E round then they hit the floor you can then finish them off using the revolvers or the pistols. It's the easiest thing to do on the game and we're not here to pull the wall over anyone's eyes like I discussed before. This is a true account of what is most powerful in the game after taking every single aspect of the game into consideration. And also remember you can change some of these cards around depending upon your opponent. If they're not taking as much damage for example, you can then supplement Fool Me Once for peak condition to be able to give them extra damage. So make sure you're keeping an eye on what their ability layout is. Now if you guys were going to go into showdown series for example and you weren't going to fight at long range, PIB is the fastest way to get the best score on the board and the best layout to have is this one. Reason being, you can focus on your headshots, body shots, you can take a tier 3 tonic and minty game, you don't have to worry about someone body spamming you all the time because this provides all the defense that you need. Never without one means that you can take headshots and to be honest even when your hat comes off and it inflicts more damage upon you it doesn't make that much difference now because i mainly like to fight quite competitively when i go into a shootout series i mostly just use the full defensive build with a tier one or two tonic you'll hardly ever find me using anything else because i don't feel like i need the extra aggressive cards because i try to be accurate with my headshots if I know there's a, another sniper in the session, then I might supplement one of the defensive cards for sharpshooter. And this prepares me for more or less any situation that I get myself into with the Carcano rifle on my back, the two sword off shotguns as my front weapons and the Lancaster as my sidearm. Now, if I wasn't scoping at all, I'd have the double barrel shotgun on my back and I'd have the two pistols as my front weapons. Now remember guys, if you feel like I'm leaving out one of your favorite cards or you've got a strong case for one of the other ability cards, please let me know in the comment section below. We have run these tests on every single card within the game and we've taken into consideration the tonics, the ammunition and the circumstances. Now guys, for some of you dudes that are already subbed, thank you very much for your support. It's muchly appreciated. And if you are new to the channel, please do remember to like, share and subscribe. We're gonna be back in a few days time with some serious showdowns so maybe i saw some of you dudes there we're also going to be gearing up for another cheaters exposed volume four so don't go anywhere and i'll see you guys in the next video